Okay guys, let's get started drawing this little Pac-Man figure today. I'm going to show you two ways of drawing this using Autodesk Fusion 360. One is via geometric construction and the other is via tracing it uh, using an image, okay, using a logo. So let's get started on this, okay. So one of the first things I'd like you to do is just to check that you've got a few uh, parameters set up correctly in Fusion before we actually start. That way then it won't confuse you and your screen should uh, replicate what I have. So I want you to click on your name up the top right hand corner and go to preferences. There's two key things I'd like you to do here. Ensure your default modeling orientation is in the Z up. If it's not, it will be in Y up. So you'll need to change that to Z up. The second thing is default units over to the left hand side here. Click design and ensure you're in millimeters. If you're not, change those two things now, then click OK, Apply. The next thing I'd like you to do is open your data panel, go into the top left hand corner here, show the data panel, and ensure you are in your default project. And I double click on that to open it. And you've got to remember Fusion 360 is a cloud-based program, which means all your designs are saved and stored in the cloud. So when you click on things, just wait a little bit, a little bit, and it will go up there to open it, okay? Once that's open, I can close my data panel and let's start drawing now. Let's start using geometric principles to draw our Pac-Man. The first thing we're gonna do is create a sketch. So create, create a sketch, okay? Or we can come up to the top here and just pick that icon there. Create a sketch. Now we want this front plane here. Now to ensure we get the right one, I can expand my origin box and pick the XZ plane. We're going to create a circle, so create a circle. We're going to make sure it's a center diameter circle. We're going to snap it at this point here and drag out. Now one little other quick thing I need you to check is to make sure you have snap to grid turned off. So down the bottom here, you watch where my mouse is traveling, we're going to ensure that the snap to grid is deselected, okay? Because this will cause you some grief as we do this drawing today if you don't have it like that. We're going to put a dimension on that circle now. Notice that the circle is blue. And the circle is blue because it can be changed. It's not locked down. It's un what we call in CAD terms underdefined. Create. All the way to the bottom is a sketch dimension. Notice to the right of the sketch dimension there's a shortcut key for that called D. If you press D, you'll get you into dimension. Drag out, so to the side here, and I'm going to type in 40 millimeters and press enter. I'm going to press escape key to get out of the dimensioning and I'm going to pick fit. And then I can scroll back out or I can move the design somewhere where I can see it quite easily. The second thing I'd like you to do is draw straight lines. So we're going to go create, alpha line, We'll snap to the center and drag out here. Once again, snap to the center and drag out there. Now, using our dimension key, so D for dimension, we can put our 90 degree on there. And you see how I did that? I click one line first. I click the first line, let go of the mouse key, click the second line, let go of the mouse and drag out and change it to 90. Now there's an easier way of doing that and that we can put a constraint on that. So if I was to highlight that and press delete and let's put a constraint, a perpendicular constraint. Now notice the line is blue which means it's underdefined. If it's underdefined I can move it around. All right, so let's, I'm gonna show you a different way now. Perpendicular constraint, okay. Pick that line first, that line second. And all of a sudden, you'll see that little constraint, that T, that perpendicular constraint is now fitted, and we have 90 degrees. The second thing I'd like you to do is draw a vertical line. So alpha line, snap to the center, drag up, terminate once you touch the circumference. Now you'll notice that the line turned black immediately this time. All right. We're going to go C for circle, snap that. Uh, line so place your cursor on the line but whatever you do don't draw it where the triangle is showing here at the moment because you won't be able to move it so I would start at the center go up find that triangle go past that triangle and draw a little circle here now we're going to put a dimension on that circle so D for dimension and we're going to make it four millimeters 
Now, from the center to that center of that circle, we need to put a dimension on. So D for dimension again. We click the center point of that circle, let go of the mouse, click the center point of the second circle, and make sure that they're lined up. And we want to be 12.7. All right. For those of you following in from the United States of America or another country that uses imperial measurements, I'll just reiterate some of these for you. This outside di diameter is roughly an inch and a half. It's not correct, it's a li little bit smaller, an inch and a half. Obviously 12.7 is half an inch and 4 mils roughly about 3 sixteenths, I think by memory, but I'll check those on the video as I put them up. Now, the next thing we want to do is, because I can still move these lines here, see how it's underdefined, we need to put a dimension across these two, an angular dimension is what we need to put on. We click this line first, this line second, second and drag out, and that's going to be 45 and enter. Now, if I go fit, and I'll just zoom back out a little bit for you, and you should see now that you can see the Pac-Man taking shape. There's one thing I'd like you to do, and see this vertical line? We need to turn that into a construction line. So to convert that into construction line today, we're going to select that line first. It will turn blue. We come over to our sketch palette and click the construction icon. Okay. Now we can finish sketch and extrude this. So we're going to click finish sketch. We're going to come to a home view. We're going to click create, extrude. And we can click this profile here and drag it out. Click OK. And here we have our Pac-Man. Now let's put a color on, on the face of the, or on the body. We're going to come up to the very top here. We're going to right click at the top. We go Appearance. We're going to type in Plastic Yellow. And Glossy Plastic and drag and drop that appearance onto that. So now we can actually we're finished, so let's save our project. And I'm going to save mine into my default project. Click Save, and I'm going to call it Pac-Man Keychain. All right, and here it is here, and it's saving and it's going up to the cloud now. All right, so that's the first way of drawing Pac-Man. Let's look at the second way of drawing it. And this will be cheating a little bit because we're going to use a canvas or a logo and actually trace that logo. What I'd like you to do now is click Google Chrome and type in Pac-Man. Go to Image Search and let's pick this simple Pac-Man here. All right. And if I click on it once, I'm going to right click on it and go Save Image As. And I'd like you to save that to your desktop and call it Pac-Man and click Save. Now I've already saved mine so I won't save it a second time. All right. This time we're going to open up a new design for Fusion so we can see this tab here, there's up the top right hand side, similar to like Google Chrome, we can open another tab and here's my first design, here's my second design and we're going to save this again and we're going to click Save, we're going to call it Pac-Man Keychain traced and click save. So let's get started here. We're going to click a new sketch and this time let's pick a different plane. Let's click the XY plane. So create a sketch, expand the origin and click the XY plane. What we're going to do now is import or insert our canvas. So click the drop down for insert, pick canvas, insert from my computer and we're going to pick the image we saved earlier and click open. Now, it, Fusion is asking where do you want to put it, so we're going to pick that plane there and snap it on here. Now, you'll notice that it's a little bit small, okay? And we want our Pac-Man roughly about 40 millimeters. So I can drag the drag handle here and drag it out real carefully to about 40 millimeters. But you'll notice that he's not in the center. He's off to one side. So where his mouth is, let's drag his mouth roughly back to there. And we'll just have to re-alter that size one more time. So 25, that's about 20 there. And once that's completed, click OK. So now we can start tracing Pac-Man. And if we look at him, we want a circle, we want a couple of straight lines and another circle. Watch how quick we can do this. 
click circle, snap at the center, drag out. I won't worry about dimensions for this, so all these sketches will be under underdefined, but it doesn't matter for this purpose. Alpha line, so straight line is alpha line, drag out, snap. Click from the center, drag out, and snap. C for circle. Okay, finish sketch, home view, extrude, up 3 mil. that's the size of our plastic. Click OK. I can turn the canvas off over here, you'll notice in my tree on the left hand side, turn the canvas off. Let's apply that yellow uh, appearance again, that yellow plastic. And here's our second Pac-Man. Here's our, here's our first one, our first one, and our second one. Now the eye is a little bit different here, but we could have moved him up. So if you're going to make him your keychain today, we could come back in here, right-click and go Edit Sketch. And I could quite simply drag that back up a little bit higher, then click Finish Sketch, and the eye would update. Okay, And you can see it here. The second one. There's our third one. Let's have a look and see if they look similar. Not too bad, is it? Okay. Alrighty, so let's draw it manually now, like you would on paper. Uh, instead of using paper for the purpose of the video, I'll use paint. So I'll go back to my Google Chrome and I'll type in paint online. And here it is here, classic paint. Alrighty, now to draw this manually on paper, this is how I would do it. First thing I would do is draw a rectangle, roughly, which approximately 40 by 40 millimetres. I would then draw my two diagonal lines, and this is pretty much how we're going to make it when I take my students into the workshop as well, on their piece of aluminium. Now the two diagonal lines will show the centre. We're going to do, use a circle now. And I'll start my circle from that top corner because you're going to use, obviously, a compass or, in the workshop, a pair of spring dividers to get your circle. We would need a vertical line to find where his eye is going. And our last but not least, our other circle for the eye is roughly about there. Now we can use some shading techniques. So we can use the fill icon and yellow for fill. And we're going to fill these sections up here. And of course, if it was on paper, you would then have to use an eraser to erase those construction lines that you drew. Um, mind you, I'm using paint here and I'm, it's not going to be that accurate for me because I can accidentally blow away those lines if I'm not careful. And there we have it. Now, you may be saying, well, the paint... The paint was fairly quick, but look, there's not much you can do with the paint icon. It's it's one dimensional. You can see here, at least in CAD now, we've got this 3D image. Okay, and our first one, what we can do with that one here, we can actually go to the laser cutter now and cut that out in plastic. Now to do that, we need to grab a snapshot of that face. Okay, so to grab a snapshot of that face, I'm going to click New Sketch. I'm going to pick that front face and I'm immediately going to go finish sketch. Now notice I'm working on the first one, not the second one. I'm going to expand my sketches tab here and you'll see the second sketch has been created. I'm going to call that DXF. Now DXF means document exchange file and that's what we're going to take over to the laser. That's, that's the file the laser needs, the vector file, to cut this part out. All right, now to get that DXF out of Fusion, you'll need to right click on it and go save as DXF file. And we're gonna save that to your desktop. And that way then you can put it on your USB uh, and bring it over to the, to, the, to the Epilog laser and cut it out or whatever laser you're using at your school. All right, okay, I trust you found this little tutorial uh, informative and hopefully it will be a great little start a first start into Fusion 360. Thanks for following along. Please show your instructor or your teacher once you're finished. Thank you.